סגן אלוף במילואים יאיר רמתי הוא אחת הדמויות המרכזיות במדינת ישראל בכל מה שקשור לטילים, למל"טים, לרחפנים. הוא חבר הוועדה המייעצת של ה-IHLS, סגן אלוף כאמור במילואים. הצטרף לתעשייה האווירית מל"מ במשימות טכנולוגיות פורצות דרך, ובין השנים 1992 ל-1998 הוביל את פרויקט החץ במערכת הביטחון. לאחר מכן הוא מונה למנהל מפעל מל"מ. הוא מייסד ושותף ב-ETY Technologies ויושב ראש RCL U-Visions, ההרצאה שלו שמה הוא דו קרב בצהרי היום. מל"טים טורקיים מביסים את מערכת הפנציר הרוסית. הנה. A unique event just happened uh, recently while uh, Turkish UAVs takes down a Pantsir uh, air defense modern uh, weapon system. So what happened? We will have to look first on those uh, air defense system, on the TB2 uh, by Bayraktar armed uh, UAV, then we will introduce a Pantsir modern SA-22 code NATO Greyhound air defense system, and then we will learn what happened in Libya just a few months ago. So in general, uh, when we are confronting uh, air defense system vis-a-vis -vis, uh, type, uh, those types of armed UAV, it might be a question of the length of spear you have. On the other hand, situation is much more complex and more difficult. So who are playing there? First one is armed UAV. Armed UAV are well known for more than three decades up to now. They are composed of the platform itself, armament, ground station, actually various ground stations, operators, and at the end of the day, it is an operation and intelligence type of challenge. On the uh, Turkish side, uh, it's very interesting to know that uh, Turkey had uh, built uh, for more than 20 years a very interesting type of defense industry. One of the jewels in the crown are their UAVs. One of them is Baikar UAV, uh, made by Baikar as a prime contractor, and they produced, uh, I think, more than 150 types of those. They also succeeded to uh, export them to Qatar and Ukraine. When we look at this UAV, it is a kind of a medium-sized type of a male, maybe even a small, about maximum takeoff weight of 650 kilograms, and it's armed by four types of munition. Those munitions are the MAM-L, it is laser-guided uh, kind of uh, system, length of about one meter, weight of about more than 20 kg, uh, 50, almost 50 pounds, and it has a tandem type of warhead. Remember those type tandem warhead. On the other side, we see the Pantsir, the Russian Pantsir are evolution from the Tangushka, which is a combination of guns, two types of effective guns against the short range uh, targets, and 12, not less than 12, uh, kind of short to medium range uh, interceptors, and uh, we call it SA-22 Greyhound, this is a code NATO. It is well known all over the world, about 12 uh, customers are already use them, and in Libya we are looking at the UAE type of version. It is a S1 uh, type, you will see it on board the uh, chassis of MAN, German MAN. Uh, it has a range of about 20 kilometers. Remember the length of the spear vis-a-vis -vis about 8 kilometers of the uh, semi-active uh, laser-guided armament of those uh, armed UAV. Here is the interceptor. It is a fast interceptor accelerated by about 1 to 2 seconds into a 1.3 kilometer per second, and then it flies without, without a seeker. It is guided from the ground. It means throughout the period of engagement, the ground segment needs to track the target plus minus about 30 degrees. So what happened with the Pantsir in our, our area? 
two years ago and one year ago, uh, those Pantsir in Syria had already been attacked by uh, probably uh, Israel, but uh, no, uh, I think, formal claim for it. And we can see in our right uh, photo this kind of uh, engagement while long-range uh, electro-optical devices succeeded to uh, kill those uh, launchers. Later in Syria, and what's most interesting is Libya. Within a week, Turkish UAV succeeded to defeat most of the uh, Pantsir system in uh, Libya. Here we see what happened by the Pantsir. Pantsir succeeded to kill those type of TP2 uh, by Raktar attack uh, UAV, but on the other hand, when we are looking at this conflict, we can see in the western part of Libya, the uh, Turkish uh, UAV are defeating one by one all of the air defense made by, sent by uh, UAE to Libya, to the Haftar, uh, General Haftar uh, forces, and actually all of his attack uh, collapsed and he need to withdraw. So what happened in Libya? In general, uh, the uh, forces uh, of the uh, rebels succeeded to uh, defeat the air defense. Without air defense, they lose their uh, uh, airport. And here we see what happened uh, in the front photos. On the right, we can see a, a trailer that uh, take Pantsir. It means the UAV attacks them while he is on the move. On the left, we see the shelter. Remember the penetration capability of this munition, it penetrated a concrete type of shelter with, uh, in the uh, airfield. Here we see uh, imagery from ISI of this uh, airfield, and we can, we can see the penetration of the roof of uh, this uh, shelter. When, when and where in Libya is a long story, I'm not going to go into the details of each one of them, but at the end of the day, we have a few concluding uh, re lessons learned. The first one is it is uh, syst systematically the Turks succeeded to defeat the Pantsir Telar, the launcher and the erector and the radar, based on the dominance in terms of intelligence. It means the attack UAV is not a platform, it is an array. Whenever you are able to attack those kind of uh, vehicles while they're on the move and not operational, you gain this kind of success. Out of the plan type of engagement, we saw just a few. Most of them were within the engagement sector of the UAV. We hadn't noticed any simultaneous attack from various directions, which is one of the deficiency of this uh, modern system. However, Lack of uh, technical and operational expertise by the rebels in Libya to operate the Pantsir uh, took the toll on the effectiveness, total effectiveness. And uh, sometimes the Russian claim uh, afterwards that uh, some of those uh, launchers uh, ran out of uh, munitions, so it means uh, they couldn't uh, launch any more missiles. I think that the most important element is the utilization of Coral ECM system. We see it in the photo. It, mean, it means that they, are, they were successful in negating the effectiveness of the radar of the Pantsir. Here we see the Pantsir. You see it, uh, what happens while it uh, being attacked. On the other hand, we see how it launched an interceptor. And yes, this uh, UAV had been intercepted by uh, the uh, Pantsir uh, missile. We can see in the middle the missile itself and the engagement and what happened to some of those uh, UAVs. Summary of the presentation. First and most important, Turkey has a very interesting and effective uh, armament or armed UAV array. It's not the only platform, they have some other platform. Moreover, they gain a lot of operational experience this year, both in Syria and in Libya, close to home and long distance from home. Sec third is they develop an effective operational concept which combine together the ECM, the array, 
the system and they can operate it not one against one, but many against many. It's a different ball game. Uh, I would say that uh, there are two other uh, lessons that we should learn. The first one is that armed UAV are no longer a monopoly of the West. We can see it in, from China, we can see it in uh, Turkey, and we will see it in other countries uh, which have a basic uh, development capability. The last one is uh, the Russian industry. The air defense industry, which is a very good industry, uh, suffer a commercial blow. It's not a coincidence that the uh, Rossoboron export uh, decided to send a letter to all of the customer and to claim that it's not exactly what happened, what we see what happened in uh, Syria or in Libya. It's a little different, but they are in uh, defense, uh, have to defend their uh, probably uh, one of the best air defense systems they have right now. Yeah, I have a question. In the battle between uh, air defense systems and the advanced UAVs, do you think this event that you have presented is a one-time event or it reflects a trend? Uh, let me uh, reiterate. Uh, no doubt that this is an event that uh, will be reflected in the future. However, the effectiveness of the armed UAV are not so superior versus this kind of short to medium range modern air defense. What happened is that each launcher was operated by himself and not as an array. Whenever you will see a multi-layer type of air defense and the effectiveness of the, those armed UAV will be um, different. I would expect that this kind of high noon uh, confrontation, we will, will be continuing the future, not only vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Syria, Tur Turkey, Libya, Turkey, but also in other uh, uh, array and regions. I would like to thank you very much. Let's wait for the future. We will see some other uh, event in the near future. I'm definitely sure with it.